Hi, it's me. Chinese company Venus Optics are often bringing out exciting new camera lenses and this new one here is no exception, their Lauer Argus CF 25mm f0.95 APO, a manual focus standard prime lens with an extremely bright maximum aperture for APS-C mirrorless cameras. It costs £500 here in the UK and about $550 in the US and it's available for the following mirrorless camera systems Fuji X, Nikon Z, Sony E and Canon EOS RF and Canon EOS M. Don't mix this CF designated version for the MFT or Micro Four Thirds version of the lens, they're completely different. This CF version offers an APS-C image circle only as you can see from this image taken on a full frame camera. I'd like to thank Venus Optics for loaning me a copy of it for review for a couple of weeks, although as usual this is a totally independent video, I'll be checking out both its strengths and its weaknesses. On an APS-C camera, 25mm is the full frame equivalent of about 38mm, a nice moderately wide angle focal length, making this the widest angle f0.95 lens available for APS-C cameras, I think. And with an aperture as bright as f0.95, the background separation this lens offers is still very impressive and lends itself to all kinds of subject photography fantastically well. That bright aperture also means it'll work very well for shooting indoors or in darker situations. The build quality of this fully manual lens is exceptional, its body is entirely made of metal and it feels solid and weighty at about 575 grams, it has no autofocus, no camera controlled aperture and no image stabilisation. The rear mount is metal with no electronic contacts and no weather sealing gasket which is a slight shame at this price point. The aperture ring follows and can be switched between offering gentle clicks at every f-stop for a more tactile feel for stills photographers or to turning completely smoothly which could be useful for video work, so it's lovely to have that option available. Something unusual is that this lens can only stop down as far as f11, it would have been nice for f16 to at least be an option. Above that comes the manual focus ring. Manually focusing a lens at f0.95 is never going to be a walk in the park, but this thing's focus ring turns smoothly and precisely, making the job much easier. As you can see from this footage, the lens suffers from moderate focus breathing, zooming in as you focus more closely. It does at least focus internally though. The lens has a 62mm filter thread size, it comes with a nice metallic hood which features a slip-on plastic lens cap with a leather effect finish, it looks awesome, although it's not quite as simple and practical as a normal lens cap. Overall, the build quality of this lens is lovely and solid, it really feels like a high quality instrument, but you should remember that manually focusing any lens at f0.95 will take a little practice. Now let's take a look at image quality, it's no trick for camera manufacturers to design an f0.95 lens, and there are indeed many on the market nowadays, the problem is making them sharp. I'm testing a Sony E-mount version of the lens here on my 24 megapixel Sony A5100 camera and there are no in-camera corrections available. Straight away at f0.95 we see very good sharpness in the middle of your image with just average contrast. There's impressively little ghosting or purple fringing on contrasting edges here which is also encouraging to see. Let's look in the corners. Hmm. Ok, that's much less encouraging but the image hasn't completely fallen apart here and that centre sharpness did actually fall across quite a lot of the image frame. At f1.4 there's only a minuscule improvement in the image corners but the middle of the image has gone from being very good to razor sharp with spectacular contrast. At f2 the middle looks just as good and the corners are beginning to show an improvement in sharpness, although ghosting and colour fringing are still noticeable. f2.8 only sees another minuscule improvement, but at f4 those corners now look very sharp and at f5.6 sharpness and contrast are perfect there, although a little chromatic aberration is still visible on highly contrasting edges. The lens stays this sharp down to f11. Well then, overall for an f0.95 lens at this price point, 
most people will be expecting at least excellent center sharpness, which is pretty much what we're seeing, and with much less purple fringing than on competing lenses. The image corners are not very encouraging at bright apertures, but top down and sharpness becomes excellent there too. Alright, let's take a look at the lens's distortion and vignetting now. The lens projects just a touch of barrel distortion, but nothing serious. At f0.95 though, unsurprisingly, there's a lot of vignetting, those corners look pretty dark. Stop down to f1.4 and they brighten up just a little, it's at f2 or f2.8 that brightness begins to really improve, so we can say that vignetting is a bit of a serious problem for this lens. Let's see about close up image quality now. F0.95 lenses tend to completely fall apart when shooting up close, but the Argus lens just about keeps things together here, although contrast is certainly a bit washed out. At f1.4 we see a nice improvement, and at f2, sharpness and contrast are now excellent again. Now let's see how this Argus lens works against bright lights. As you can see, at f0.95 there are a number of problems, but I have seen worse than this before. Bright lights cause a fair bit of flaring artifacts and large glares across your image, however stop down to f2 or so, and contrast is greatly increased, leaving behind just a little flaring, as you can see here. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. Unfortunately this is a weak point of the tested lens, showing a fair bit of smearing on bright lights in the corners of your images at f0.95, which damages your nighttime photography a little. At f1.4 it's reduced, at f2 virtually gone, and at f2.8 totally gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. You need to stop down to f8 or f11 to really see them here, and they never really get very big. A very important question for this lens will be the quality of its bokeh. Compared to some other f0.95 lenses I've tested, it's fairly regular and smooth, very nice actually, but some brighter specular highlights do tend to see a bit of outlining, which can add a little distraction here and there. And finally, Lauer make a bold claim about this lens, giving it an APO or apochromatic designation, so let's see about longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f0.95 the close up image is a bit ghostly from the lowered contrast at close distances, but actually Lauer's claim seems to be true this time, as I can't see any colour fringing on bokeh highlights here. Here are f1.4 and f2 for your interest. Overall, well, this new Argus CF 25mm f0.95 APO is very well done. It's sharp, even at closer distances, with decent contrast and attractive bokeh, and it has wonderful build quality, coma and flaring were higher than I wanted to see, and also the image corners could have been a little sharper at brighter apertures. Still, this thing could give you some gorgeous images, and I particularly like its slightly wider angle than its other f0.95 competitors. Its price of $550 is reasonable, so it comes recommended. Something I didn't mention is that I particularly like the CF designation of this lens, finally a bit of recognition. Honestly though, I was a bit disappointed to have to send this lovely lens back to Lauer. Thanks for watching everyone, if you find these reviews helpful then feel free to check out my Patreon page in the description below. There, supporters of this channel get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, and also get to make a big difference to me keeping these reviews going, especially these more exciting lenses. Ciao for now, everyone.